Well, today what we're going to do is just do a few little odds and ends. Uh, we've got a little flight coming up this weekend, so I'm just in here making sure the plane's ready to go and basically doing a thorough pre-flight so I can just do a short pre-flight the day of it. First thing we'll do is do some updates on the Garmin system. So the Garmin system's been updated since last time I made a video. So I've done one disc here, flip it upside down, I grab the next disc, or SD card, Put it in the slot. This is a little hard to do one-handed. Sorry about the terrible camera work. Now, my computer's set up to open this. But what it does, it'll come up and tell me which one's out of date. And right there it says, G2000 electronic charts out of date. It's kind of nice. You should not be able to do that. Now I'll just click update. I've pre-downloaded them, so it'll, it doesn't have to download it. It only has to put it on the card. Can you transfer? And it creates a report. If you want to look at the report, when you look at the report, I should say it tells you what's changed. It says it's successfully transferred. And you just eject the SD card and do it for the next one. And I should show that if you scroll through the card, it'll show all of them green, up to date, up to date. And it'll even show the end date, 02 December 21. So it looks like obstacles and safe taxi I will have to update. But I see them coming up anyway. So that's what it'll give you. Now I've done all three of those cards, which stay in the airplane. Now this card we keep in with our unlock cards. It's just for nav data. And if you come up here on the sheet, when I say sheet, you know, it's on a computer. You see the Garmin nav data is yellow. As of October, excuse me, November 4th, we'll need to use new nav data. So the plane is current, but since we got an extra card, we'll install that. So I'll take the card, I'll put it in there. The card's installed. Now it's saying, hey, that's this card is up to date. It ends November 4th. Well, I'm going to close that. I'll come up here. See my cursor? It says, I'm going to go ahead and Transfer to device. That's the, my SD card. Continue. Now, because the airplane does not need this card in it, I'll carry this in the airplane till November 4th and I'll install it. You can actually put it in standby in the airplane. The airplane will automatically update to the active the day it's used. I've only tried that once and I actually had an issue, so I just carry it with me till I need it. It says successfully transferred. Now all I gotta do is put him in the airplane. It's now in the airplane. Yeah, that's why I keep the pen. So the nav data card is in here, and I'm gonna set that to the side because I don't need it. I just will carry it in the airplane. And you carry those unlocks to the airplane in case you ever lose like your synthetic vision, your charts, you can unlock them. I have never had that happen to me. I will confirm. I don't know if you can see that, but it says PFD1. So that goes in the bottom slot, PFD1. I'll repeat this for all three of them. Now I have all three installed in the bottom slot. Each card is marked. There's a PFD1, an MFD, and a PFD2. Now I'll turn the system on. Let's come on. We're not using ground power, so we will get some warnings about low battery, or battery discharge. Usually once the Garmin touchscreens come up, I turn the speaker off. And this is what you'll get. It's a bunch of chart stuff. Can you need you know, any key to continue? Then I'll come down here just so I don't hear a bunch of beeping stuff. Turn the speaker off. And then this will come up, say everything's current. Now we don't keep the airport directory up. We don't feel we need to. It's verifying chart data, which is totally normal. You can come down here. This has been, I think this has been updated since I made my last video. You can hit utilities. Setup. Database stats. And what I'll say there is data, database sync in progress, and it's going to sync it. When that's done, then we can shut the, the power off the airplane. And we can do this side as well. There. So we just wait for that to get to 100%. There. 
told you to get a battery discharge. So those, those are the cast mesh we're getting as we're doing this. I'll explain them. Battery discharge, we, just, we don't have ground power. SWPS, we are getting that because the engines are not running, the brake is off, and the stall warning protection system has not been tested. Oxygen low would be normal because we don't turn that on unless we're starting the engines. Emergency light not armed, normal. AHAR is one and two faults. We're in a hangar, so the, they're not going to work. Shed bus off, normal because we have no ground power. And ADSB not available because we're in a hangar. It can't get signals from the AHARs and the GPS. And that's also why the surface watch just failed. So all those are normal when you're in a hangar. So it just went to 100%. So it says sync complete. You notice it says on ground power cycle required. So basically you do this not right before you start the engines. You'll power off the airplane. The next time you power up the airplane, it'll all come up normal and it'll work. So sync complete. So now the last thing you do is you come over here, turn your batteries off. And now that system is updated. And again, we didn't update the nav because it's we're October, I think we're the 27th, 28th of day. It's Monday. And uh, that's not needed until the 4th. Okay, now we're going to service the engine oil. You notice we say service with 2380. Uh, the two engine oils approved for this airplane are Mobile Jet 2 and 2380. I'm old enough, I like to call it Exxon 2380, but it is now, uh, I think, Eastman 2380. They sold a... Now you come up here and you think, oh my God, it's so low. I'm going to see if I can turn the flash on for you. But if you notice in that oil in there, it's below the one quart ad line. If any of you have been around jet engines, turbine engines of any kind, why don't you check your oil within 15 minutes after shutdown? It might even be 10 minutes in this airplane. Last time I flew the airplane, I made a note that needed oil. We're going to put half a quart in each engine. The plane's been sitting seven days. Looking at the gauge now means nothing. Pratt & Whitney will tell you if it's low now, motor the engine, then check the oil. So you make notes when to add. I knew I needed to add a half a quart. You're not getting a lot of action shots because I'm by myself and I don't want to spill oil everywhere trying to get a video of the shot. We're, we're going to put half a quart in each engine because I made notes last time I flew. This is the oil, Eastman 2380. How do you open it? Well, I use a church key or a can opener. This is what, I don't know, I grew up calling them church keys. That's because that's what my mom called them. So, anyone else call this a church key? I'll just show you that oil is almost clear. I mean, on top of the can, you can barely tell it's even there. And if you get in your finger, it's it's almost hard it's hard to wash off just because it's so like castor oily, but it doesn't want to come off your fingers. Here's what it is after we added half a quart. And that is truly about right. It'll be it'll be above that one line. And I know they put this minimum maximum on there, but what's funny is they will tell you do not add oil until it's below the one and don't bring it over the minimum line because you'll just blow oil over the bottom of the engine. Another thing we're doing today is what I'm doing today is we're putting nitrogen in the tires. We're checking them. I just put a little bit in the other one, so we come down to the tire. There's the cap. That is a fuse plug. That's designed to give out and create a slow leak in case you overheat your hub. They are placarded down here. Very difficult to read, but I believe it says 174 PSI. I'll see if I can get an extra shot. Yeah, aircraft on the ground, 174 psi plus 10 minus zero. I take them up to 178 to 180 is what I run them at. Last one was at one, uh, 170, so we put it up to 178. This one we'll see what it's at. And neat. Something to remember about these tires: if you run them 10% low on inflation, so 17 psi low, they're considered unserviceable and you must replace them. Just a uh, food for thought there. Now. They also say you can run up to, that's dirt, but you can run with cord showing 20% of the radius, which is the 11 inches of cords on the tire in the maintenance manual. I don't do that, but that's what the maintenance manual says. You want them, they're very worried about sidewall failure. You want them low, you have to replace them. You got cord showing, you can run them a long time until you get 11 inches of cord showing. And we'll go over some fueling operations here. This is the fuel cap. It is locked. There's a key in the airplane for it. I've had the caps off this airplane once other than during maintenance. And the caps were only off when we bought the airplane to make sure they worked and locked. Uh, of the three Phenoms we've owned as a, this company, I've only fueled over the wing once. So the way we're almost all fueling gets done is this panel here. Yeah, I 
pre took them off. So if you're going to fuel the airplane, you, you have to go to battery power unless the power to the plane is on. Then I normally just go and open that so it's ready to fuel. I'm going to pause it because when you, it'll say waiting. It seems like when we're waiting for it, it takes forever. Now it came up, it's ready to go. If you notice, this is what's in your tank. This is what it's selected. If you want to tell the line guys 100 gallons, 200 gallons, 300 gallons, this is all you have to do. They'll put it up, put how much fuel in it. And they have to stop it if it's a gallon amount or it'll go till full and the airplane will stop it. That would be one way to do it. The other way is if you want to hit this selector, it'll start at the fuel at, and then go up by 10. And once it's the first 100, so if you wanted 3,300 pounds for a trip, like my next trip, I want 4,400 pounds, which is 1,000 pounds under maximum fuel. So I will take, I just set it to 4,400, tell the line guys to go till it stops, and that's all it is. So then it'll be ready to go. When they start fueling it, we do the shutoff test. When the fuel's going in, you hold that up, you make sure both these two valves will close. The Embraer system is this way. When, they're, they're, when the light's on, they're closed. When all three of those lights are off, it's taking fuel. Tank selection switch, I say that's the most useless switch in this airplane. It does not select where the fuel goes. It just tells you what each tank has. I repeat, it will not send all the fuel to one tank. It'll only tell you what each tank has. So like now we say the left has 760. The right has 825, total 1580. If you do that while you're fueling, all you're doing is look at the tanks. You are not selecting which tank the fuel goes into. I repeat, you are not selecting which fuel the tank goes into. Useless switch. So that is fueling operations. We're underneath the airplane now. The fuel door is right there. And if I open this up, that's the back side of the fuel panel. So you can see we go from a big hose to, I would bet those are one inch fuel lines. That one will go to the right tank. I want to go to the left tank. So you can see it splits very, very quickly after that. That's your fuel system. Well, that's your fuel intake system. There's the electric panel that you're setting. And there's some, there's your landing light boxes, if you want to know. Those are, I really have no idea. I can tell you though. Oh, those look like hydraulic lines. I see hydraulic on them. Okay, here is, there's probably your, I'm not really sure what that is, but there's a lot of cables, other stuff. Oh, that yellow thing right there is your fuel tank, and I'll show you. As we go farther back on the airplane, here's another panel you can open. So we open that, and right here, again, fuel tank. Here's your two sumps. I believe those are the only two sumps in the entire airplane. The farthest back, lowest point on the airplane. I don't think there's one here. There's a fuel sensor. And there's one on the other side as well. But those are your fuel sumps, which you know obviously we sump every week before we fly. Very simple fuel tank system. One tank in each wing. Each engine burns from its corresponding wing tank, unless you cross feed. Just to give you an idea where we are, there's the landing gear. Again, fuel sumps. There's the panel for the door. And there's the door panel for the where the fuel splits and also where you get your landing lights. Hope you enjoyed the video. I wish I had my creeper. I got it at the farm right now. So I'm just laying on the floor taking nice video shots for you. But very, very simple fuel system. Very easy to use as a pilot, from a pilot standpoint. I was just going to show you a little bit to end this video out. I kind of forgot and stuff. But planes take a lot of abuse. Remember, we're going through the air sometimes 400 miles an hour. We can indicate 300, 300 knots for airspeed in this plane. Actually, 320. Add 15% to that, I mean, you're, you're at 370 miles an hour. You go through any rain, anything, bugs, stuff, it takes paint off. So that's the fuel door there. You go underneath here, and we're going to take off. Your tire will kick up a little gravel. These are your landing lights. See, this one's been touched up. We're going to go into maintenance here in about a week, uh, excuse me, about a month and a half. So, sorry about that. I actually hit the button to stop the video as I was laying under here. These will get touched up in maintenance. We'll fix the paint there. And I mean, you can see they take preventative measures. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little clear erosion strip there for these scoops. And this one's pretty beat up. This one's a lot better. This one was probably replaced last time. 
This one will get replaced this time. Just keep the paint there. Clean aircraft paint takes massive abuse when you're going through rain or anything, because when you're going through rain at 300 plus miles an hour, it will take paint off in places. So that's the result. And we touch it up every time it goes into maintenance.